Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. Yesterday, patch 13 went live and one of the main features is the new Fallout First membership and the private servers. Let me show you how everything works. Fallout 76 now has a monthly membership it's called Fallout First and it costs 15 euros per month. It gives you a set of benefits that easily puts you ahead of everyone else, at least those without it. One of these benefits is the access to private servers. Yes, you heard me right. If you want to have your own private world, you will have to pay for it. Now, I spent the entire day today testing things out and I found a few things that Bethesda didn't tell us at all. They are quite game-breaking and I think everyone should know about them. This is not going to be an opinion video. I want to give my full opinion, so I will leave that for another time. For now, I want to present you 20 points that you really should know about Fallout First and the private servers. So let me show you guys how everything works, including things that Bethesda didn't mention at all for some reason. Let's start from the beginning. How can you get the Fallout First membership if you really want to? There are several ways to get it. The first one is through the website, which is all over the place when you go to Fallout 76 in Bethesda's website. There is a huge banner and an icon in the main menu. It's very difficult to miss. Now, when you start Fallout 76, you will see a new feed which will redirect you to the website again to purchase this membership. You can choose between a monthly or a year plan. They have different costs as obvious. And then you can proceed when you have selected the platform and the plan that you want. You should read the small letters because there's a lot of information there, such as an auto renewal. It's always going to be automatic, but don't worry, you can disable this later. For now, all you have to do is fill up your personal data and pay. Anyway, if for some reason you come across this error, clear your cookies in your browser because it's an error with the website. I did that and everything was fine after I cleared my cookies. Once you have your followed first, let me show you how to disable the renewal. You need to go to your account to transaction history and memberships. And as you can see, there is this option here to manage and then an orange button, which you should click if you don't want to renewal anything for the next month. All right, what about the benefits of this new membership? There are plenty to go over. There are six main ones but some benefits include others so there's more than just six now generally speaking all you should know here is that in private worlds everything works the same as in adventure at least in terms of rules your progress will carry on from private to adventure and vice versa however patch 14 came out yesterday and with private servers and followed first there's tons of information to understand and absorb as such i will try my best to be straight to the point and as simple as possible so let's jump into the next point something that is really noticeable when you log in right now is that you have two feeds the normal one with news and the second one, which is exclusive for Fallout First members. Right now, we don't have much. We basically have information about the features of this new membership, but in the future, I'm sure they will add the exclusive sales there as well. Maybe even news that are only for Fallout First members and so on. Now we have two feeds and I'm not sure if I like that. Anyway, if you have a membership, you should access exclusive sales as well. Right now, there doesn't seem to be any, but Bethesda said that will happen in the near future, so keep an eye on the Atomic Shop. This part is probably one of the most favorite ones for people who are getting the membership. Every month of subscription will give you 1,650 atoms. It kind of pays itself since Bethesda and other third-party websites are selling 
1000 atoms per 10 euros you get even more than that so if you really don't mind spending money in this game this is not such a bad deal because you get more than you're paying just in atoms i'm not even talking about all the other benefits that are included in the membership I know I said this is not an opinion video, but the Ranger Armor outfit looks gorgeous. It has this cyberpunk, futuristic, yet badass look, which has turned it into my favorite outfit right now. It looks really, really good. Don't forget to unlock it in the main page of the Atomic Shop right now, then head to an armor bench to craft it. You will need some cloth and steel, and then equip the outfit to see how it looks like. On yourself here's a preview if you're not going to get the membership at all so you have an idea how it looks like from the front from the back and damn it looks really really good but has put a lot of effort into this outfit i can tell you that much moving on when you unlock this outfit it will be yours forever even when you suspend or don't renew your membership you will also get some free icons and free emotes, two of each. Don't forget again to unlock them at the main page in the Atomic Shop, it's very important. For the icons, you need to go to the default page to find both of them. It's this yellow first icon and the second one represents the new rendered outfit in an icon. There is an helmet too, I didn't show you, but it's part of the outfit. Now, for the emotes, there is two new ones. They are dances. They look really good and funny at the same time. You can enable them under the misc part. It's the puke. And you'll have a Motman dance and a robot dance as well. I will let you see and hear it for yourself, just in case you haven't yet. Another main feature of the Fallout First membership is the survival tent, which to be very honest with you, I'm not sure why they have added this to the game. I mean, it has very basic stuff inside, like a stash box, like a sleeping bag, a cooking station, and the junk box too, and an instrument to play. I mean, it kind of makes sense in a survival game, but since this is a free point, it's really not fair for everyone who is not a member. I mean, this doesn't work in adventure, gladly, but even still, you will save a lot of money when you play in private worlds and you use this as your middle point. Let's say you have your camp in the mire, then you have Vault 76 in the very west of the map if you put this for example around the cranberry bog or in the ash heap you will save a lot of caps trust me so yeah i guess it's a great benefit for members but it's a huge letdown for everybody else also, don't forget that to summon this tent, you need to go to your favorite stab, and then depending if you are playing on PC or console, you need to click a key to, well, get it showing, and then you can place it just like an item in your camp. <clears throat> the new scrap box has unlimited storage for all your junk items. Don't forget to unlock it in the main menu of the Atomic Shop, and then go to your camp and you can summon it under storage it will show up as the first item at least for me it does feel free to place it whatever you wish and well welcome your unlimited junk inventory literally you can put as much as you want there is no limit but there are a few things that Bethesda didn't mention for example you can't add bulks 
because junk bulks are not considered as junk items. Before you add anything to this stash, you need to scrap it. It has to be a raw material. Otherwise, it won't let you add it, which kind of makes sense. So maybe it's time to scrap all your bulks and stash it up. One of the first questions I did when I saw this new scrap box was, what happens if I don't want to be a member anymore? Well, you can still access the scrap box, as in you can retrieve your items from it, but you won't be able to add anything else. At least that's what Bethesda said. You still have access to this box, it will be in your camp, in your tent, and so on, but you cannot move any junk items from your inventory into the stash box. That's it. Other than that, you can remove things, as in, if you need them, you go there, you pick them up, and you can store all your junk items that are in your inventory in your normal box, just as you used to do before they invented and added this new scrap box into the game. Okay, now it's time to explore the last exclusive feature, which is the private servers. You now have a new option when you click on play. Before we had survival, it is long gone. Now we have private servers when you enable your Fallout First membership. Now, how does it work in this type of server? Bethesda has stated that it's basically the same thing in terms of everything, really except you are on your own server, you are the host, it is your lobby, but it's kind of a fiction because this private server is not really private since your friends can freely join you whenever they please without an invite at all. It's a bit strange to be honest. Anyway, there are some new status in the friend list as you can see. When a player is in their own private server, it shows as private and when someone has joined a private server from another player, it shows as visiting private. That's what I could find. Despite all the rules being the same, there are some different things in private worlds, mostly regarding friends. Now, who can join you and when? All your friend list can join your private server if they want. They don't need an invite, they don't need anything. All they have to do is click your name and then join you. Yes, that is actually true. There is no real invite option, unlike Bethesda mentioned. If there is, I haven't found it yet. And that can be quite annoying, especially if you have a lot of friends. Imagine the server is full and you want a specific friend to be part of your server. How can you ban or kick people? Well, you can't. There is no option to do that. The only way to kind of perform this action is to block or unfriend a certain person. Right now, these are the two options that can mimic the kick function, which doesn't really exist. Let's imagine that you are already a member, you are playing in your private server, everything is fine. People can join you and play as much as they want until something happens to you. If you crash, if you disconnect, or if you simply decide not to play anymore, then you leave. The server will go down for everyone who is not a member. Unless there are two conditions here. If one of the players remaining in the server is a member as well, then the server will remain active. And all members are free to stay and keep playing in any private server, even when the hosts are not there anymore. Now let's talk about something really serious that I discovered today. And this will change your opinion whether it's bad or good about the Fallout first. You can actually reset the private servers, you just need to know how to do it. It's very easy actually. Now you should be alone in the server. If you have uh, another premium members with you, you cannot reset the servers at all because you know you leave and you come back and you're joining the person who's in the same server. So that's not really possible to do. But when you are alone, all you have to do is leave the server Wait a few minutes, I would suggest five minutes because the servers seem to be really, really slow and they take a while to reset. It's not immediate. You leave and it doesn't reset automatically. You need to wait a little bit. So if you do this, 
you will see that you will always end up in a different server. If you rush it, you will end up in the same server and you're basically wasting time. I tried to do this several times within one minute and the result was always the same. I found the corpses that I had killed. How can you know if you are in the same server or in a new server? The easiest and quickest way is to check the in-game time through your Pip-Boy or do it like I did. Clear an area, an instance, I choose the boroughs, I clear part of the entrance and then I started doing this strategy or trick to test it out if I ended up in the same server or different ones. So when I did it really fast, one, two minutes, I would end up in the same servers. As you can see here, the corpses are right here. I just killed them five minutes ago. I joined within one, two minutes and the server didn't reset. Now, if you wait five minutes, more or less, you will see that things are different. You will join and the server has reset. Suddenly, all the mobs are back. And now they haven't respawned because they take a while to respawn in all locations. So it is just a trick to force the servers to reset since it is your server. And it seems like when you are not playing for a few minutes, it will just go down. And the next time you try to join, it will be replaced by a new server. I think I don't need to say much after letting you know that you can reset private servers. This pretty much means that you can farm as much as you want in a much easier and faster way compared to public servers. I mean, you can just farm one, two locations over and over. If that's what you want to do, there's no one to stop you. I mean, today I wasn't even resetting any servers and I got legendaries worth of at least 300 script under two hours i find legendaries everywhere especially because there are no empty locations like in public servers you know west tech and white springs the boroughs sometimes they are on cooldown which means you have to do several server jumps until you find a place to farm with private servers that doesn't happen even with rare plans like the paint jobs i came here first time and the plan was right on the desk. I mean, it took me around 20 server jumps at a time to find this, and now it's right there. Wow, what else should I say here? With the server resets, it's certainly easier to farm and find plants. Even without it, it's already easier. Now, when it comes to events, there is something more. Because you are solo or with your team, you have the legendary bosses all for yourself. You don't have to worry about players when hitting the bosses by accident or because they want to grief you. It doesn't happen anymore. You are there on your own, at your own pace. It's all about peace and love, let's say. Therefore, farming legendary items is so, but so much easier in every single aspect. But there is one more thing, you can also avoid all sorts of PvP. After all, there is no one there to attack you. Even if you have pacifist off, you don't have to worry about PvP and people trying to lure you into combat. It just doesn't happen anymore. You can just lay back, enjoy, relax. If you die, it's completely fine. You can go back and retrieve your loot. And that's it. Talking about loot bags and dying, I found a new bug today that I'm not entirely sure if it's for private worlds or adventure too. I died and my loot bag was basically bugged. I couldn't access it, I couldn't loot it, nothing. I even had the mission thingy saying for me to loot it, but I couldn't. I ended up losing all my junk here and that's a bit annoying, but I didn't have anything special, so I didn't mind it too much, but yeah, unpleasant. Anyway, I haven't found this in adventure yet, but you are warned, this may happen to you as well. Also, I saw this dance between a ghoul and a scorched. I had to add it here, I couldn't resist. <laughs> There is something today that I have tested regarding private world rules and it seems like they are not working as well as they should. 
because I was in my private server, you know, I got my other account to join me and then I left the server. Now my second account doesn't have the membership, it's only a mule basically, but I was able to stay there. I was offline for at least five minutes. I had no notification that the server was going down. It never went down. I stayed here for at least 15 minutes. So how can this happen? I mean, I thought that when you don't have a membership, you are kicked out of private servers. It seems like it's not exactly like that. Is it a bug? Is it intended? I'm not entirely sure. I want to tell you something really important. The private servers are not really private and you cannot lock it down. Let's say you want to play strictly solo. You want to be single player. That is only possible if you have no friends. If you have a friend list and someone decides to join you, there is nothing much you can do about it. There is no password option. In fact, the servers have no options at all. You can't choose anything. All you can choose is to join Adventure, a private server, or Nuclear Winter. That's all. Something else about private servers is that business is basically dead. I mean, whether you play solo or with your friends, you won't be selling much because if they are your friends for real, you probably won't be selling things to them, you will trade or exchange goods. Hmm. Also, you shouldn't expect any support or revives because you are basically alone. There is definitely room for slacking, but it can be really frustrating if you keep dying and you have to keep running back to retrieve your loot. So think twice before letting your character die. The last point I have chosen to present here is related to mod support. It actually doesn't exist right now for private servers, but it's something that Bethesda has said they want to include even before the game was released. Most recently, they have mentioned in several media like articles and even in real life events that they are working on more support features. So I can totally see that private servers will have this sort of feature starting 2020. It has been announced. We know they are working on it. So it's only a matter of time until it comes live. <laughs> Whether we like it or not, private servers are here to stay and I pretend to make an opinion video very soon about this matter. This one was mostly informative and I hope you guys learned something new with the content I have presented you. It took me a while to test all of these things, but I'm quite pleased with the results. I really had no idea you could reset the servers or that you could remain in a private server even though you don't have a membership and there's no one there left besides you. Mm, testing is definitely fun. Anyway, my Halloween event is still going on. Feel free to participate. All you have to do is submit a Halloween screenshot. It's for PC only. All the rules are in my Discord, so feel free to join. That's going to be all for this video. Thank you everyone for watching until this point. I'm Marta Branco. If you are new around and you enjoyed what you saw, don't forget to click in the subscribe button below. I also have a Patreon page for anyone who would like to support me in other ways. The link is always in the description below. Thank you again everyone and I will see you very very soon. Until then, take care. Adios. Bye bye.